Alright, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Indie Boy Racing here, and today we find ourselves scooting around the Canadian Grand Prix circuit in honor of the big news of uh, Nicholas Latifi departing Williams Racing, hopefully F1 forever, but you didn't hear that from me. As I was saying, this track is very simple, beyond simple. It's pretty much Sunday cruising, alright? So prepare yourselves for a spicy lap, a track guide, then we'll check what's under the hood, but uh, no surprises here. talking about the track and what I think will uh, get you the spiciest lap out there. And as I mentioned before, this track is very simple. The only thing that may give you a little bit of trouble is this very last turn or first turn as we're setting ourselves up for this hot lap is this guy right here. He may send you into the champion's wall and it's called the champion's wall for a reason. Break at the 75, drop it into a third gear and prepare yourself as best you can with a straight line through this very tight chicane. Now get as close as you can to the wall and right as those track limits end over there start preparing yourself diagonal over here to the left side of the track start flying you will be hitting seventh gear at those lights right there on your right and then you'll start sweeping slightly to your right right here as we get to this white little sandbox or trap whatever that is you may be able to hit 8th. However, keep it in 7th, start letting off, and at the end of the silver or gray spot here is where we're going to start slowing down and braking, turning the car, dropping it into 3rd gear, and this is very much like the like Mexico. This very first turn is just a hard left, and a chicane, and an S. So, take that left, get to the track limit all the way to the left drop it into second gear as you hit the apex of the second turn going right and then prepare yourself ease onto the, the throttle because you will have tons of wheel spin so ease up on that traction fly through this straight away you'll remain in sixth gear and then quickly as you get to these signs here on your left tap the brake drop it into third fly through here. This is a section you can really fly through. It's like a really miniature version of the Laguna Seca corkscrew. So, take it with ease, fly through here. You want to be in sixth gear as you're making this tight right-hander. Hug the wall, start pumping it into seventh gear. Make sure you're all the way to the right. And as you see that little electronic sign in the 50 meter, let off and then break midway to the apex, drop it into second gear, and allow that weight to carry yourself through this turn. And just like the previous turn, ease onto the throttle, 
and start flying through this straightaway, except one, except this is a little bit longer. All right, the signs are on your left. You may be wondering where they're at. They're right here. Here's the 100 meter with the electronic sign. You want to break halfway through here. And this is a little bit tricky because you will be able to take this turn with a lot of speed. I take it in fourth gear, and as I hit that first apex, I drop it in the third with a quick butterfly tap on the brake just to get some grip in the front and control of the car just to make sure I don't have too much understeer. And then you'll start flying through here, stick to this black rubber line, and as you hit the 100 meter here on your left, or the Brazilian flag, maybe it's not the same for everyone, but the 100 meter, tuck in real fast, let off, and break at the 75, possibly the 50 if you're feeling lucky, because this is the hairpin of the Canadian Grand Prix. I think it's cool from an aerial point of view, very beautiful, but nothing too special, nothing too crazy. Like I said, nothing's going to pop out at you. Take the middle line, because this track has a nice gradual dip, which I feel just kind of helps, gives you a, a push, and then just naturally will guide you to the left to help prepare you for our last turn. Breaking it, letting off at the 75, breaking, dropping into third, coming into the champion's wall, and here we are setting ourselves up again for another spicy lap here at the Canadian Grand Prix. So I hope you learned something, and uh, let's get ready to check what is under the hood and what makes me, uh, what makes me fastest. I think I'm fast. 27-29. You're midway. You don't have too much downforce, and you're not giving away a lot. This has a lot of straightaways, but the twists and turns you do have and do take, you're going to want the downforce there. 60, 50, like I mentioned, the twists and turns to help with that gradual transition to traction as you're going through them. Nothing crazy, just like the setup in Mexico. Same as always, let's move on to suspension. Now, this one is, like I said, you're midway through just about everything. You're not too soft, not too firm. Six, five, six, five. Play with it. Have some fun with it. You may be able to get a little more loosey-goosey. That way you have some oversteer to help get that rear end to twist a little bit faster through the twist and turns and the S's and chicanes here. I kind of like a little more understeer so I can wrestle and grip that car. Now, PSI all the way up for time trial. But as we prepare ourselves for the race, you're just going to want to lower them a tiny bit. All right, I go 24.3 with the front, and then I'm going 22, maybe 22.5, 22 on the rear. Nothing too bad, nothing too crazy. But that is going to be the setup, the track guide, and the spicy lap here for the Canadian Grand Prix. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Like, subscribe, definitely leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you around. Enjoy. You're still here? Video's over, man. Get out of here. All right? Go do something with yourself. Is that real sweat? It's real sweat. I'm a high-performance athlete. Athletes sweat. Sweat, baby. Sweat, sweat. <laughs>